Tough times can even make you or break you. Joshua is wobbling. It was tough, but it made me. This was the moment that Anthony Joshua became a major star. I was just shouting at him, like, come on, let's fight. Where are you running? Come on. As I hear the bell, I see the punch. And the first thing I said was, uh-oh. This is the, uh, the passion of Dylan White. I thought there was going to be riots in the crowd. I really did. The upset special can be ordered right now. It was just bad intentions for years. Boy, rude boy, shut up. At the time, I, I didn't feel like a sportsman. I was just a local lad from, from Watford who fell into boxing. So I didn't understand what a sportsman was. I'm only, honestly, hand on my heart, I'm only learning that today. At the time, I was so disconnected from what a sportsman was. I was just fighting. I wanted to have a good scrap. I didn't really grasp what I was doing. I was just going with the current, and I happened to be against Dillian White, someone who I faced in the amateurs. He was your typical tough guy. That's my first initial thought of him before I started working with him. He's a natural born fighter. He has started fighting an empty room. That's the, that's the size of a heart he has. In white, you had a dude who could talk the talk. He's a braggart. He's bombastic. He has a dynamic, not just a dynamic style, but a dynamic personality. Ring walks and entrances are a massive part of boxing. I've seen some amazing ring walks in my time. So, for me, I've always wanted to kind of give people just like good music, something that they can relate to. This is like for the British title. And then Stormzy was on his way up at the time, and I thought that's a perfect tune, Oi Rude Boy, shut up. And that was directly at Dylan, listen, shut up. Because this was the time to face off now. I knew Dylan White, real talent, you know, real good boxer. For me, it was a bit early for both of them. He looks like a superhero who has superhuman strength. And his style at the time was search and destroy. And I used to liken him to a young George Foreman. So he was Big George 2.0. He'd just walk guys down and break them down. Sometimes you make a fight where you can feel the street. What I mean by that is at any time, anywhere, these two could go. It felt like a big fight. And to be perfectly honest, it felt like a bigger fight than a British heavyweight title fight. But that's what Anthony Joshua had become. And because of the animosity that Dillian White had generated in the build-up, that added to the atmosphere. I called it bad intentions because I knew both guys wanted to hurt each other. You know, both guys wanted to damage and knock each other out. In my third amateur fight, I had boxed Dillian White. I invited all my friends down, and um, I lost to Dillian White. I was supposed to rematch him in the amateurs, but he got banned from the amateurs because they found out he was a professional kickboxer with a vast amount of experience. Dillian gave me a tough fight, but I feel like tough times can even make you or break you, and for me, it was tough, but it made me. I didn't give up, but I carried on and um, it made me tougher. So as he had turned professional, I was kind of heading towards the Olympic route. And there was always saying, when this boy turns pro, we're gonna finish his career. He was being treated as this national hero after winning gold at London 2012. But Dillian White was saying, I know the street Anthony Joshua, whose background is very different. And he was calling him a fake. As Anthony Joshua became more and more famous, more and more accomplished, then there was a target that Dillian White was aiming at. And as he took aim at that target, the words that were coming out of his mouth got a little bit more nasty, a little bit more personal, to the point that Anthony Joshua just couldn't ignore him anymore. You don't have to like the guy. 
but at least you have to give him his just due and respect because he is a gold medalist. And I said, regardless of if you think he didn't look, look good winning it, it's a proper protocol for gold medals. My whole thing was I was trying to calm down Dylan White's anger. I'm like, just let it go because that type of thing consumes your mind. My focus was to keep him focused on the proper things at hand. Dylan's 100% trash talking, telling you exactly what he thinks is going to happen. I believed that he believed he was going to knock Andy Joshua out. So you've got Dylan representing, you know, the island of Jamaica, and you've got me representing the continent of Africa. You've got South London versus North London. You've got two British born heavyweights. There was a lot in the mix. It was just bad intentions for, for years. And then finally we got to, to face off and uh, square off in the square circle. Billion, the body snatcher. It was very, very, very hostile. It was split right down the middle. There's a lot of people believing Anthony Joshua was a hype job and Dylan White was the real deal, you know. Anthony Joshua had been to the Olympics. He was like the, the darling of British boxing and Dylan White, for instance, had to do it the hard way, fighting on small hall shows for no money, effectively. Anthony Joshua. This was his first pay-per-view event in the UK. You know, this was the first time he completely sold out the O2 but it was the first time he took a risk, really, in a fight. You know, it was the first fight that he had where we felt, blimey, this is a real, real fight. Dillian White had all the physical gifts to be a leading contender. He had these outrageously long arms. What we knew about Dillian White was that he had the punch to trouble any heavyweight on the planet. My whole thing was just keep it professional. Your best thing to you could do is to beat them. No matter what happened, that's the only that's the only way you win. Not if you hurt them, not if you go to a brawl, just if you beat them. Is what we say. Ain't no turning back, baby. <laughs> and this is what I live for. Keep it clean, Greg. Straight away when told. Both you want your heads in close. Good luck to you both. Touch clubs. Howard Foster in charge of 35 stone of power and malevolence. This one has had a real bad edge about it. Now it becomes very real indeed. Seconds out, first round. White says he wants to expose Joshua as a fake. Joshua wants revenge for that defeat in the amateurs. Joshua is off to a flyer. See that, he's going with the hook in the right hand straight away. Really trying to stamp his authority on Dillian White. Let him know he's the boss right away here. Jolting straight left hand there as well. That uh, yep. had White back it oh, up. Oh, good counter right hand from Joshua as well. I'm really actually quite surprised at how quick he started here. I really did think he'd try and ease in, get White on the end of the jab, try and control the tempo. But no, he's put his feet on the gas neck. Yeah. Just drew the lead there and planted that counter right hand once again. I didn't have much experience at the time, so I had no plans and I didn't have years of experience behind me. I wanted to go in there and I wanted to box, have a look, but it, it just turned into like a... I was just shouting at him like, come on, let's fight, where are you running? Come on. There's another heavy assault from Joshua. This is really early, isn't it? Yeah, he's putting his foot down here. And look at this, look at that grin on his face there. It's like, I got you. And White at the moment is backed up and trying to just roll with it here. I'm just telling him, come on. You said you wanted to war. Let's go for it. This is about the lions of the jungle. But obviously, I don't know about punch selection here. This is where I'm fighting on a pure emotion. Joshua looks like he's got absolutely no respect for White's technique. He's got to be careful. He doesn't walk into that left foot counter. White loves that shot. 
Your heart rate's now in the red zone in round one, which it should be like that in round seven. It's a 12 round fight, but I went at it from round one. But at the same time, look, if I was looking from the outside of, as a spectator, that's the type of fight I want to see. So um, I'm glad I got to give people that are watching at night uh, an insight to what the heavyweight division was about to be like. There's that left it to the body again. Joshua working at this pace is not going to bode well for him, Nick, if this goes past seven, eight, nine rounds. It was everything I didn't want to see. You know, it was pure emotion. Tactics were out the window. Jab was non-existent. It was, I want to hurt this guy. Joshua was putting his tongue out, you know, goading him when he was hitting him. Where has this come from? What are you doing? But at the same time, wow. That's a... Ooh, one on the bell. There. Oh, and look at White. White's gone crazy. <laughs> Banks is in there straight away. That was Joshua in after the bell. This is absolute chaos here at the end of this first round. And Jonathan Banks has done a great job. He's thrown White in his corner and shielded him <laughs> as everybody's just going berserk. He did land after the bell. What a reaction from White. As I hear the bell, I see the punch. And the first thing I said was, uh-oh. I just seen a bunch of feet running up the steps, running past me. I'm like, I'm looking at all, the, all his whole team just jumped in the ring and everybody's just ready, ready for a brawl. And I just reacted, I just jumped in the ring and I pinned him in the corner. Because I said, no matter what everybody else do, I said, it's my job to protect, to protect my fighter that I came with. And he was pushing me, he said, JB, get off of me. I'm like, no, this ain't going nowhere. I had both ropes, <laughs> just like this. I was leaning on him. I said, no, I said, you're not going nowhere. I thought there was going to be riots in the crowd. I really did. And technically, if anybody gets in the ring that isn't um, the corner, the fight should immediately be over. It should be a disqualification loss for the person whose team got in. At that moment, I'm thinking, oh my God, they're going to call the fight off. But the British Boxing Board of Control would come in and say, it's off. Thankfully, the security got in, we calmed it down. And even then, I'm thinking, oh, looking at the board going, all right? And thinking, don't, don't do anything, because this is wild. <laughs> Three minutes and one second. Um, what I was always taught, certain fighters, they wait for the bell. That's not a true warrior. A true warrior will wait until the referee rips you apart. And they're the type of things that I took with me in the ring that night. <laughs> and this is the, uh, the passion of Dylan White, the, the fire. And this is where everyone gets in now and it's like, yeah, these are all my, this is my lion pride, this is his lion pride, do you know what I mean? Is this fight even going to continue? Has this bad blood gone too far? Thankfully, order was restored and we go into the second round. But what a beginning to the fight. Well, as if this fight needed anything else. This is a superheated atmosphere here. Joshua still chatting away as he did throughout that first round. Boxing is a discipline. It's the art of sweet science to hit and not get hit. And if that goes out the window, when you've got a guy who's technically good, kickboxing background, boxing background, he knows how to throw to hurt, he has bad intentions. He's throwing to actually hurt. Better start to the second round, certainly for Dillian White than it, than it was in the first. As I've gone to throw a right hand, you're supposed to sit back on your back foot and rotate to get your leverage. What I done, I leant over my front hand, which puts me in the firing line and boom, left hook hits me. He's shaking Nick, here. That's that counter left hook we were talking about earlier. Joshua is wobbling. Now, what a moment this is for White. Early in the second round, Joshua shaken down to his foundations. I didn't see it coming because I wasn't interested in what's coming back. I'm just interested in attacking Dylan. And um, it was a peach of a punch and it shook me down to my boots. The whole game plan in the fight was to set him up for a left hook because at the time, before that fight. I'm like, ain't nobody throwing enough hook to this kid. I said, he, he won't be able to see it coming. I said, he's looking for your right hand. Everybody thinking you got a right hand. Set him up for the left hook. That's gonna be the shot that's gonna, that's gonna hurt him and possibly take him out. 
He just got too confident. He's losing his feet as well, Nick. And Joshua just wasn't thinking as he attacked and pushed forward there. He's got to be careful of that. He ran right into that left hook. Dillian White threw a left hook that nearly derailed the career at that stage of Anthony Joshua. For a few shaky moments, it did look as though this much lauded professional career was beginning to fall apart. Anytime you see a, a prospect that has never been hurt get hurt in the ring against a live opponent, yeah, absolutely, you think that the upset special can be ordered right now. He was shaken. What a moment that was for White. He couldn't quite close the deal. Anthony Joshua had it his own way up until that fight. You know, everybody, he'd hit someone, they'd hit the floor. But Dylan White, you hit Dylan, he hits your back, and he's, gonna, and he's trying to take your head off of it. Couldn't put the finishing touches on that there. He lost his feet and his balance went a little bit. There's that left hook again. Every time he throws it, you think, hello. And a nice right to the body in response from Joshua. Well, Nick, you mentioned earlier that these boys have been a little bit rowdy on the streets in their day. That's exactly what this is turning into right here. Yeah, this really is, a, is basically a street fight with fists and gloves. Oh, that's a brutal body shot there, Nick. He does not want to take too many of them if this is going to go up, down the stretch. The first thing, they've got to stay calm and think what to do next. And in Anthony's case, I thought he did well. I thought he got it with a really good shot. Got, got shook a touch, then, then composed himself and, and stayed calm. The danger for fighters when they, they get caught and, and shook like that is they start swinging and rushing in. I think, you know, you've got to be smart, pretend you're not as hurt as you look. But it's part of the drama of heavyweight boxing. You're, there's one, you're one shot away from, from trouble or disaster at any point, and that's what's fascinating about it. He had used so much energy in those first two rounds, he went back to the stall and he's gone. You're in war and you have, you know, one guy that's riding through on a horse, waving a sword. Um, sooner or later, someone's just gonna, you know, hit him with a, an arrow from nowhere, that's him gone. That's like the emotions, ride through, I wanna take on everyone. The first two rounds was all heart. Weren't thinking, rushing in, trying to take him out and then I switched it to using my brain. And that's when I got back in the groove because I was now thinking fighter. Oh, lovely little sharp counter left hand there from Joshua at the start of this fourth round. As again, White was crude and left himself open, and you do feel this is going to be his undoing at some point. He does leave himself so open in his, in his urgency to try and land a big power punch. Early on in my career, even though I was winning in a round or two, I would train as if I'd gone 12 rounds. So it wasn't just like, yeah, lads, we won. Let's pop a bottle of champagne and you know, all celebrate the victory. It was like, hold on a minute, coach, can we do some extra work? Because I put myself through that early on, it gave my body an understanding what it would be like to go the distance. As the fight draws on, once the initial energy goes and it comes down to who's got the lung capacity, who can hold their form together when it's getting, when it's getting crazy in there, is the guy usually who wins the fight. Round seven. Well, you'd have got some odds on this. We're going into the second half of this one. Yeah, and the way it started in round one, would you believe we'd be here now? I started throwing the right hook around the site, and the right hook started connecting. So instead of throwing the left, I switched to the right. So there's a few times he threw a shot, I kind of ride it, right hook. What happens is that their legs start to plant and they start to stay still. So they're now easier. This is easier target to hit than someone who's moving a lot. Nice. Oh, that's a big shot, Nick. Rocked him early out of nowhere. Another right hand as he left himself wide open again there, White, and has paid for it. Now, Joshua's got him in trouble. White backing up. I line him up with the lead hand and I whip this one around. Boom, it's out of his peripheral vision. So it's coming around. Boom, lands on the side of his temple. And the same thing that happened to me around two, it shook Dylan right down to his boots. And uh, the key to victory there was not giving him a chance to reboot. Keep on sending little viruses into his system. <laughs> just left the jab here, right hand here, you know. Um, and I just didn't give him a chance for his system to reboot. Joshua looks like he's in no rush. He's playing the matador in there at the moment. Oh! Marching him with a huge right uppercut. White is down, and I'm not sure he's getting up from that. This is over, Nick. He's not getting up. No way.
when you're in that ring, you feel someone's aura, you feel someone's strength. So all these punches and pushing and shoving, you're feeling how strong that person is. And it's very draining when you've got someone that's just chasing you around the ring, pushing you, shoving you, punching you, leaning on you. And all you want is like five seconds to breathe and I'm not giving him one second to kind of have a, to just kind of regain his legs and get himself together. When the uppercut landed, I knew it was good night, Vienna. I knew it was a good night. The uppercut was peach perfect. The uppercut is stemmed from one of my favourite fighters, Mike Tyson. And I feel like that was one of my favourite punches and it's done me well. There's no way he was going to get up in 10 seconds after that shot. AJ, one of the best finishers in boxing. You know, he smelt blood and he was just unloading. Those kind of knockouts are, 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 are great to see because you know they ain't getting up. He beat an undefeated fellow prospect, another guy with a lot of pride, a lot of talent, who didn't know how to lose. So for, for Joshua to knock him out, it, it meant something. Yeah, it meant that he is a finisher. He's a finisher on the world-class level. I don't think I've ever done it before, or I've ever done it again. I ran to the corner and I stood on the edge of the ropes like I was in um, a wrestling match, and I put my two hands up and I was like, yes! like. It was an important victory. That one was for London. It was just a London fight that was important to me. It could have happened in someone's back garden. All about bragging rights, all about ego. And I came out on top and I was a king of the jungle at that time. Commonwealth champion, now British champion. Next stop, possibly for this man, the world. I don't embrace with my opponents after fights. Only Vladimir Klitschko, Povetkin, Ruiz is a humble guy because I don't really get too involved in the emotions of boxing. I don't need any extra friends. I've got a big family. I've got friends that I grew up with, I'm good with that. So I don't need I don't need Dylan as an extra friend or anyone else in that matter. They talk a lot of rubbish before the fight, a whole heap of rubbish before the fight. You know, after we beat each other up, then then they want to be saying, oh, I didn't mean none of that. You know, you're a great man. I'm just like, shut up. If you didn't mean it, why say it in the first place? After all that, then they talk rubbish about you again <laughs> a week later in an interview. So what I tend to do is just keep my distance and I don't embrace anyone. We're there to fight, we're not there to be friends. And that's just how I approach my sport. For me, the thing that stands out is Anthony learned so much from it. You can't go into a fight annoyed. You've got to go into a fight professional, calm, composed, thinking about the strategy, and certainly that's what's happened ever since. Uh, he's been right on it. That was a ruthless finish, absolutely stunning. I know he thought that fight shouldn't have gone, had been as competitive as it was. Um, so I think it was a little a little wake up cause, okay, whatever I'm doing is great, but I mean, I've got to step it up a little bit now, you know, because if that was happening at British level, when you go up to world level, you know, you're gonna get, you're gonna get found out. They are the kind of fights that can never be underestimated in terms of what they give you when you move forward in your career. But there's a fine line in boxing where it can go the other way and you can lose. And you may not come back from that defeat. Thankfully, he's won, but he's learned. The other key that he learned was inside the ring that not everybody is gonna fall over instinctively when they're hit. Not everybody will not hit back. And that second round was key for Anthony Joshua. The biggest lesson was um, about recovery for AJ because that was the first time anybody ever seen him wobble like that. But that's also something that gave him strength to say that, you know, I got caught for, with a big punch for the first time and it hurt me, but you know, I, I stood up. It did feel that this was the, the moment that Anthony Joshua became a major star, that this was the launch, really, of Anthony Joshua. And he is the unified Commonwealth and British heavyweight champion, the fighting pride of the UK, Anthony Joshua. I'd love to just send a message out to everyone who was with me in those early days just to say thank you because it was not known that I could go on and you know win a world title 
and people are still riding with me. They just saw some potential. So I just want to thank the people who believed in me, saw the potential and came out 